Lab number 5 is entitled, Build Your Own Digital DC Voltmeter. Analog signals are voltages or currents that are continuous with every possible value. Let's take a look at an example like a voltage divider where we use a potentiometer. When the potentiometer is in the middle of the rotation, you have about half the value of the pot. So if I had a 100K pot, I'd have half here and I'd have half here. What I could do is use a symbol, say alpha, that represents the shaft rotation. Alpha times 100K, when alpha is a half, would give me half here, and the remainder would be really 1 minus alpha times 100K. If you're a quarter of the way here, three quarters of the way here. This could also be a slider pot, too, with representing the position of the slide. All right, the voltage V out here, then, would be this resistance over the sum of the two times the 5 volts. Adding these two together, though, the alphas cancel, and we wind up getting just 100K. That cancels with the value in the numerator, and so V out is 5 volts times the position of the pot. So in the half position, you have 2.5 volts, and, and so on. As you move the potentiometer from one end to the other, you're really getting all possible values between 0 volts and 5 volts. With digital signals, as we saw last time, they have only two possible values. We've been using voltages like 0 and 5 volts. You can also talk about this as being a logical 0 or a logical 1, and what that really means is that something is off or something is on. We could take this idea a little bit farther, as we did last time, and talk about a a bit, which is a binary digit that's either 0 or 1. In a base 10 system, we start counting with 0 and then all, go all the way through 9 and then start over again. Well, the same idea with just having 2 bits. If we just had 2 bits, you could have a 0 or 1. Let's say represent 2 numbers, 0 and 1. If you allowed another column here, then we could just start this over again. So we'd have 0, 0, 0, 1, which correspond to 0 and 1. And then 1, 0, we could correspond that to 2. And then 1, 1, that would be, say, 3. So we have four different numbers here. If you just keep going, start that over again, then we'd have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. And that would be counting really from 0 to 7, or really eight numbers. And in general, what we've got here is 2 raised to the number of bits that we have. When we had two bits, we just had four possible numbers. So we're counting from 0 to 3. 3 bits, 8, 4, 16, 5, 32, 6, 64, 7, 128, and lastly, 8, 256. Converting a binary number to a decimal number is pretty much like we do when we look at a decimal number. The the digit to the far right is the least important, or we call it the least significant bit in this case, and then the term on the left is the most significant bit. In a base 10, this number is really multiplied by 10 to the 0. This is multiplied by 10 to the 1, and then 10 to the 2. But in a base 2 system, that would be 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, and 2 to the 2. So in this particular case, 1, 1, 0, would correspond to 4 plus 2 plus 0, which is 6. That's what we had on the previous page. We could do this for a 4-bit number. Suppose you had 1, 0, 0, 1. Again, the first place is 2 to the 0. Second place is 2 to the 1. Third place is 2 to the 0. Fourth place is 2 to the 3rd. And of course, the ones that have 1 in it are going to give us um, our value, so it would be 8 plus 1 or 9. In lab 4, we send binary bits between several pins and ground at the same time. This is called parallel data transmission. This data transmission, too, was not coordinated or synchronized, and sometimes called this asynchronous operation. In the case of our push buttons, it means we can change the binary values whenever we wanted to without waiting for permission from the basic stamp to do so. Likewise, the basic stamp checked our input pins as fast as it could without waiting for a signal that the data was ready to be checked. We saw last time that the basic stamp has 16 input-output pins, so we could send a 16-bit binary number to the basic stamp in parallel, but then we wouldn't have any other pins left for outgoing signals or other input data. When dealing with large binary numbers, sending things in a serial format from one pin to ground instead of in parallel is useful in that it reduces the number of pins that we need. 
The disadvantage is it's going to take longer. To send serial data between one pin and ground means that we must look at the voltage between these pins at a specific window of time. Note its value and then repeat the process. This means that the sender of the data and the receiver of the data have to be in sync. We sometimes call this synchronous data transmission. The way we're going to do this is with a clock signal that's generated by the basic stamp. The clock signal is just a pulse that goes from 0 to 5 volts. When the clock signal makes a transition from 0 volts to 5 volts back to 0, this is the signal to read data. For instance, here's my clock signal going up and down between 0 and 5. Usually it's a square wave. When it makes a transition from 0 to 1, back to 0, these are logical values again, we would read the data. So if this is my data that was coming along, I'd be reading it here, 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 and here. So it would correspond to 5 volts, 0 volts, 5 volts, and 5 volts. Again, this is going to become logical 1, logical 0, logical 1, logical 1. An analog to digital converter measures an analog voltage at an instant in time and returns a binary number that describes its value. The A to D converter we're going to be using in lab is an ADC831. It's an 8-bit analog to digital converter. What this means is that it can approximate an analog voltage as a binary number in 256 different pieces. In this particular case, let me show you what it means in our basic stamp. Our reference voltage on board is 5 volts, and that voltage reference is broken into 256 pieces. The way it does that is going from 0 to 255. So 0 over 255 times 5 would be our first quantity. Then 1 over 255 times 5, 2, all the way through to 255. So we have 256 pieces. So really it's just 2 to the n minus 1. This would correspond to the binary number, 0, 1, 2, and so on. What we effectively have here is an increment of about 19.6 millivolts. So we're able to take a 5 volt signal and break it into smaller steps, in this case 19.6 millivolts. If we used a 12-bit analog to digital converter, it would have higher resolution and have the ability to do 2 to the n, which is now 2 to the 12th, again minus 1, divide that into 5 volts, you're looking at 1.22 millivolt steps. So it depends on the application, how much resolution you need to have. The analog to digital converter that we're using has a IC pinout, like our other ICs, like the op we used, and the numbers of the pins are labeled in a counterclockwise fashion relative to a either a notch here or a little indentation over here by pin 1. Now with the op amp we had our own special symbol, we had a triangle. For a lot of digital circuits they just use a rectangle. You could use this rectangle as indeed just the schematic symbol, but what they tend to do is to group the things that are being used together so it's a little bit easier to draw the schematic. Here are all the digital outputs, here are the analog inputs, and here are my DC voltages and references. The term VDD here is uh, the power supply. And it's 5 volts for our power supply that's built on the basic stamp. We could also use a different voltage if we wanted to. And this allows my increment, again, to be divided by 255. But if I'm, if I'm in a smaller voltage range, say maybe 0 to 2.5 volts, then I have a much smaller step than we looked on the previous page. It would be the 19.6 millivolts divided by 2. Pin V in plus is our analog signal with respect to ground. The V in minus is what's called an offset level. We're going to make this just zero, but you can actually have a DC level here kind of lifting up your analog signal. DO stands for a digital output. This is our serial output that's going to be coming out of our conversion. CS with a bar over it is actually chip select complement. To prime the analog digital converter to take a measurement, this pin receives a signal from the basic stamp that starts high and then goes low. And then has to stay low during the conversion. CLK here stands for clock. The clock pin must receive a signal from the clock to signify that the conversion is about to start. And it does this by going from 0 to 5 back to 0. And then it would take 8 more of these for it to actually do the conversion. This is all described in words here. We're going to build the following circuit on the basic stamps protoboard. We use our analog to digital converter. We're going to hook up a potentiometer. 
that we're going to be able to create really an infinite number of voltages, actually between 0 and 5 volts. And then we're going to convert that out into a signal we're going to display. The symbol for the analog digital converter that we mentioned is not the, the actual IC picture, but one that describes kind of where the digital signals are, the analog signals, and the reference signals. The pot that we're going to use has a slot where you can put a screwdriver or your fingernail and be able to turn the potentiometer from, from one end to the other. And this is the symbol for the behavior of this pot, where this is node A, node B, and node C, where B is the tap. And literally, you're moving a piece of carbon across a track of carbon as you're rotating that. So when you're actually laying this out, this is what you're going to be looking at in terms of the schematic, but then we have the actual pin out of the part. And likewise, this is our schematic symbol for the pot, but this is the physical plot and pot and what it looks like. On the previous lab, I, I laid out the circuit for you on the proto board of the basic stamp. What I'd like you to do for next class is to take the blank basic stamp proto board on the following page and lay out this circuit with all the wiring connections. Make a copy to use during lab and submit the original to your lab instructor to be graded. And this picture is on the following page. Just trying to see if you know how to lay out all the pieces as you've been doing in many lab experiments up to this point. Well, in this lab, we're learning about analog and digital signals, and we're going to take a look at how to convert analog into digital using our converter. The concepts that we just covered are counting and binary, serial data transmission, analog digital conversion, and then inside the lab itself, you learn about what are called subroutines, the commands known as pulse out, shift in, and debug and the idea of differences are between fixed and floating point numbers. As far as laboratory techniques, you're going to be using off-the-shelf integrated circuits to do a serial analog digital conversion. We also have issues, again, of accuracy and resolution. Again, we'd like you to read over the lab experiment itself and to look over this lab lecture along with this video, and there'll be a quiz when you come to lab. And this is Lab 5, Build Your Own Digital DC Voltmeter.